What's up guys, welcome back. My name is Nick Vasquez. I'm a realtor here in the GTA with Kelly Williams. Here are some tips to get your offer accepted when you're going into multiple offers. In this video, we'll be going over what to do in a multiple offer scenario. So obviously for most of 2021, most houses have been going into multiple offers or bidding wars as some would say, and they've been selling over asking. Right now things are slowing down and some houses are selling without multiple offers, but there are still houses that are seeing a lot of offers come in. It can be really stressful when you find the house that you love and you really want it, but then there's 14 other offers that you gotta compete with. So what do you do when you're in this situation? I'm gonna break down some of the things you could do to stand out from the competition and get your offer accepted. If you follow these steps, you have a higher chance of beating out the competition and getting that house. All that being said, if this video is helpful for you, please do me a huge favor and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and if you're feeling extra generous, just tap that little notification bell. Let's get right into it. I'm going to start with explaining how multiple offers work. So generally, the seller will put the house on the market and then have an offer date, usually a few days after listing the house. It'll be something like looking at offers at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. So basically, the house is going to be on the market, they're going to wait for all the offers to come in and then at 5 p.m. on Tuesday the seller is going to sit down with their agent and go through all the offers that they got. Usually this is a one-shot deal. There's no real room for negotiation here and the seller has all the power. So basically you submit your best and final offer. They're going to go through all the offers they got and pick the one that the seller likes the best. So all you got to do is find out what the highest bid was and beat it, right? It's really not that simple. The real estate laws in Ontario state that the listing agent cannot disclose the contents of an offer to another party. So if I'm your buyer agent, the listing agent is not going to tell me what price another party is offering for the house. So we don't really have a way of knowing what other people are offering. All the listing agent is allowed to tell me is how many offers they've actually received. So if we're buying a house and there's multiple offers, the only information I'll have is that there are X number of other offers. Obviously, if that number is higher, that means the house is probably going to sell for more. But with that information, you're basically stuck in making a blind offer in an attempt to get the house. And while price is an important factor for the seller to make the decision of who they want to work with, it's not the only thing that matters. And there are a lot of other things that can come into play that can help you out in this situation. Let's quickly break down some of the things you could do to make your offer stand out and beat out the other competition. So number one is to get as much information as possible. You want to make sure that your agent is able to get the most amount of information about the seller as possible. This includes your agent calling the listing agent. Your agent should be getting to know what's most important to the seller. Most of the time it's going to be the highest price, but you're never going to know unless your agent doesn't have a chat with the listing agent. If your agent is good as well, you can generally get an idea of what the sellers are expecting in terms of price. So with that information, you can then cater your offer to what the seller wants. Next tip is to accommodate the seller's closing day. This is very simple, but if the seller has a specific closing day that they want, just accommodate them. It might be a little inconvenient for you, but I promise you, if there are two offers that are identical, but your offer has the closing day they want and the other one doesn't, they're going to choose your offer. This also goes for other terms in the agreement. So for example, if the seller has a chandelier that they really love and they want to keep, don't put that you want that chandelier in your offer. Just be flexible and give them what they want because like I said, the seller has all the power here and if you want to get the house, you kind of just have to be flexible and do what they want. Next thing you can do to get your offer accepted is to remove as many conditions as possible. It's always good to include some conditions when you're buying a house to protect yourself. The two main conditions are financing and a home inspection condition. If you want a rundown of those two conditions, just check out the video I put out last week. I'm going to link it above. In multiple offers though, having both of those conditions in your offer can actually put you at a disadvantage. Even if you're offering more money than another party, but you have those conditions in there and they don't, you might end up losing that deal. The reason is, is because without conditions in the deal, you're not able to back out and get your deposit. This is obviously very attractive attractive for a seller because they want the deal to get firmed up right away and not give you a chance to back out. They're firming up the deal. So they're basically locking you in. And if you do decide to back out for whatever reason, you're going to end up losing your deposit to the seller. Again, that's very attractive for them. So this leads us to the deposit. Including your deposit with your offer can help you win in a multiple offer scenario. Typically, you would submit your offer and then once it gets accepted, you have 24 hours to provide the deposit. However, in multiple offers, it's usually a good idea to just include your deposit with your offer. You're basically dangling your deposit money in front of the seller, letting them know that you're serious and you want to get the deal firmed up right away. Another thing you can do concerning your deposit money is to just up the amount of your deposit. Typically, the deposit's about 5% of the purchase price. So if the house is 500K, a really strong deposit would be 25K. If you really wanted to make a statement and stand out, you could put 30K, 35K, 
50k as a deposit all this does is just show the seller that you really want the house and you're being serious you're putting your money where your mouth is you're really going to stand out if you did something like this and that can be really attractive from the seller's point of view the next thing you could do to get your offer accepted is to include your pre-approval letter with your offer or you can get your mortgage broker to give the listing agent a call just to let them know that the buyers are approved they're good to go on financing this can alleviate some of the stress for the sellers if they know that you as a buyer are qualified to buy their house the seller won't need to stress or worry about you backing out due to a financing concern and that can really help you in this scenario number six on the list is to include a cover letter this step is not something that a lot of people do but it can help you in certain situations basically all you're doing is including a letter written from you to the seller just talking about who you are why you love their house and why it's the perfect house for you and your family you can then slap a picture of you and your family onto the letter and include it with your offer the main goal of this letter is to put a face to the contract and to turn a logical decision into an emotional one logic makes you think and emotions make you act so if there are two offers that are very similar with price and condition but one of them has a letter with a beautiful picture of a family you know they're looking for their first home that offer is more likely to get accepted over the other one that's just a contract so writing that letter can give you a leg up in certain situations next tip is to make sure that your offer is competitive this goes without saying but you want to make sure that you're offering a realistic price that gives you the best chance of actually getting the house obviously you're not going to know what other people are offering but i Ideally, if you really, 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 really want the house, you want to make sure that your offer is the highest one. All the other stuff I mentioned isn't really going to make a difference if you're not in the top two or three of all the offers in terms of price. Ideally, you want to be within a few thousand of the other top offers. If you're 10 grand off the highest bid, the seller's probably not going to care about your letter or your big fat deposit. So make sure that your offer is competitive. Last thing on the list, above everything, just make sure that you're working with a realtor that can get the job done. You want to be working with someone that's going to go out of their way to try and get you that house if that means presenting your offer in person which is another thing you can do to get your offer accepted or if they have a prior relationship with the listing agent you just want someone who's going to go above and beyond and get the job done for you a good agent will be able to guide you through the multiple offer scenario and give you a realistic idea of what you need to offer to get the house obviously and this goes without saying you should be working with someone that you trust because some agents will make you overpay or overbid just because they're chasing commission checks this is not the person you want to be working with you want to be working with someone someone who's going to give you a good shot at getting the house while not taking advantage of you. So that's basically it. Those are some tips you can do to try and get your offer accepted. I know that multiple offers can be stressful and annoying, but with these tips, you'll definitely have a better chance of getting that house. Nothing is guaranteed, of course, but with these tips, you'll likely increase your chances of getting that house under contract and then you're one step closer to moving into your dream home. I really hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions or you are thinking of moving to the greater Toronto area, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact info is below. You can hit me up whichever way is easiest for you. If you wanna start looking at houses or you wanna talk about your plans or your goals, just reach out to me and we can start having those conversations. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you liked the video, if it was helpful for you, please hit the like button. We got some great videos coming up, so stay tuned. If you wanna see my next videos, please double check, make sure you're subscribed. Until next time, enjoy yourself and have a great week.